Hello, everyone. So my name is Fernando Salinas. I'm Director of Solutions Engineering for eBirds Microsystems. And today we're going to talk about how to successfully deploy an IP facility. You know, what are the network switch options? Available and recommended topologies. This is number one. Uh, then how do you control it? So available orchestration options, gateway options, security, and then just to touch base on really cloud and, 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 and what exists in that platform uh, as a whole. When it comes to um, vendors, right? Obviously, Everse has had its EXE for for a number of, uh, of of generations now. You know, EXE 1.0, 2.0, and now moving into EXE 3.0. So this is obviously one option. It's a dedicated fabric, really designed specifically uh, to move multicast across these facilities. Uh, there's a simplicity to this to, this uh, type of hardware, if you will, and and the idea here is, is that's why it exists as a whole because there's lots of questions as to why Everts builds uh, a switch fabric when other vendors like Cisco and Arista exist. And the reality is, is that, you know, we've created a dedicated fabric purpose built for moving multimedia content and multicast across that network environment. You know, we can design solutions with uh, Everts EXE. We can design solutions with COTS. Uh, Cisco and Arista are the, are the primary players in this space. Everts was known at the very beginning to kind of build these big switch fabrics with the EXE. And, you know, they were considered monolithic architecture. Uh, monolithic architecture, simply what that means is, you know, one large fabric that's going to suffice from the day one when the facility is built or, or designed all the way through the, the, the growth life cycle of that network architecture. So meaning if you're starting with 100 devices connected to that switch fabric and you look, you know, in, in the span of seven to 10 years and say, hey, you know what, we're going to grow to 20 or 30 percent you select the appropriate sized fabric to be able to suffice that build. And you add line cards and you add fabrics across that architecture, um, you know, to connect these devices. These today exist anywhere between 10, 25, 100 gig, 400 gig ports. So lots of scalability. We're talking about being able to really connect huge builds in one single chassis or dual chassis for redundancy. So you can also talk about building dual monolithic uh, in that environment. Benefit here, super simple. Everything goes into that one device or two devices for redundancy, if you will, um, and, and the complexity of the network really goes away. The orchestration layer communicates with that network and it's one big switch. Next, however, at the top half of this graphic, you'll notice that there's a leaf and spine architecture. Now, this is where all of the devices would connect to. If all the devices are connecting to leaves, I've got to manage the bandwidth between the leaf and, and the spine. Now, this can be managed quite easily, but it can get a little costly as you start to scale. So typically what we want to do is we want to only connect devices to these leaves that really require that aggregation, which is why you'll also hear the term a core and an aggregation network topology. Because at the end of the day, that's why those leaves exist. They're aggregation switches that are going to take connectivity that isn't maximizing the port bandwidth, and they're going to basically take many ports and convert them into one full port. The other piece that we talk about is mixing the two. So there are areas in designs where we call it a bit of a hybrid build where we have a core and aggregation as well as a monolithic chassis for other devices. So this hybrid approach also exists. Now, it can be a bit daunting to look at it this way and say, hey, you know what, there's a lot of network to manage there. But keep in mind that what we're doing here is sort of the best of both worlds, the ability to take some of the advantages of what core and aggregation or leaf and spine would offer, but also offer the simplicity of a topology in a monolithic core. When it comes to those topology options, like I said, I mentioned that as literally one of the most important steps that you got to take because that's going to define how the facility scales and grows over time. How are you going to control them? So the orchestration of that topology is key. If you've got a very complex network topology and, a, and, and no real way of configuring or controlling it, then at that point now you've got this huge build that you can't manage. Magnum is capable of managing leaf and spine architectures, core and aggregation architectures, monolithic cores of any size. It can manage multiple sites with any of these topologies combined. So this flexibility is unique to the industry, and it's really what sets Magnum aside from all of our competitors. And we focus primarily on controlling devices via API. When we talk about API control, we talk about the ability of the orchestration layer to communicate directly to the network. We want to be able to know exactly what's going on on the network and decide and make those decisions for the network on where every route exists. But when we're talking about thousands of multicast moving across that network, there's nothing more important than an orchestration layer that has a full definition of what's going on in that fabric. And that only comes from API. 
which is something that Magnum and Everts have put in place for our EXE and other third party fabrics like Cisco and Arista. So being able to communicate with those fabrics natively via API is extremely important. So then the question is, well, why does IGMP exist? IGMP has been around for a very long time. And frankly, it's been around for longer than native APIs have been around. IGMP control allows your network to really make the decisions, but this was pretty much based for an IT architecture that was moving, you know, a few hundred multicasts here or so forth, or WAN architecture with thousands of multicasts, but again, not in a live fast switching environment. So this is one of the key differences. Remember, we're talking about lots of audio, video, metadata moving across these fabrics, and we're talking about switching them real time in PTP. When we talk about, you know, ISO 6 as well, you've heard of that and, and say, hey, you know, with all the other options that existed, where did ISO 6 go? It's still there. It hasn't been discarded or dropped, but the reality is, is that it hasn't received much buy-in from many of the vendors themselves. Everts is there. We're ready to jump on that ability when required, but today we natively build drivers specifically to these fabrics. So we're able to control real time today with hundreds of deployments, a native API approach. And last but not least, interoperability, and it ties into all of the other points, ensuring that when you've got native API control and you've got a orchestration layer like Magnum to communicate with these, you've got guaranteed interoperability. That's extremely important. We're not just relying on IGMP to send a couple of commands and forcing you know, the network layer to really build its own decisions. You're using the interoperability layer as you know within Magnum to understand everything that's going on with that architecture. You've got all of this network topology. You've got you know this huge network you've built, or this you know these design options. There are endpoints and gateways that you need to consider to connect. All of these will connect to a number of different types of network topologies themselves. The gateway doesn't really care if it's a leaf and spine or if it's a core, an aggregation, or a monolithic core. It will connect there and maximize the bandwidth accordingly. So if you've got a high density gateway and you're filling up these network ports, you're able to manage this architecture quite easily with our orchestration layer. The number of different options though, encapsulation, decapsulation with processing capabilities. Now that means that now you can take that gateway that you started off with and you can load software on there to perform other functions. So processing, multi-viewers, UHD capabilities and so forth, this can be had with gateways that are, have a slightly larger FPGA, more processing capability. They do have a higher cost per port, but they perform more than one function. So this gives you a ton of flexibility and no throwaway into this future technology. As part of our lines, we've got the Scorpion platforms, very versatile that Everts has the hardware that fits each specific need, high density encapsulation or flexible processing capabilities. In this case, you know, we're talking about passively cooled uh, gateways and so forth to be able to end cap and decap or process in a studio without fans and noise. So lots of flexibility, lots of different places places to choose where these hardwares fit and all of them controlled by Magnum. So that's the important key here. When it comes to controlling these devices, obviously Everts communicates with its devices in, in the native state, or it can also communicate them with ISO 4 and ISO 5. So this is important because we have the ability to, to choose how you control to these devices, whether it's a third party device that you want Magnum to communicate to or discover Please note that it's important that you focus on ISO 4 and ISO 5 for simple interoperability of any device across your network. So we're able to communicate with hundreds of devices via ISO 4, ISO 5, all concurrently alongside native control as well. So there are a number of other devices in the ISO 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 platform. Um, uh, you know, on screen there, you'll see what they were for, what they were designed to do. What about encapsulation? Which one do I choose? Is it compressed? Is it JPEG excess? We can do either, and we can do either concurrently, and there are benefits and, and, and downfalls, if you will, to either any of the topologies you choose from Eberts or any of our Magnum orchestration control uh, platforms will work with either of these different encapsulation standards. You know, it's, it's important to note that as you start to build out these huge networks and you're moving all of this content across these networks, is the ability to ensure that things are stable and secure. You're connecting them, you know, whereas most thought Oh, uh, this is a network island with just my media content. But at the end of the day, there are links and connectivity across to the different platforms and outside of this world. So it's important to note that we want to have a strong security presence. Another one is government accountability. There are laws in different states, countries, and, and provinces that exist that force the, you know, the security mandate across these different architectures, such as who's hosting 
user information, login information. How do we prevent these attacks in general? What do they mean for emergency broadcast systems and stuff like that? So lots of requirements of why it's important to manage a security platform. So Everts has number one common criteria certified. So we're focused on security. We've got a, a, a team dedicated, you know, specifically for managing security initiatives, ensuring that bugs, issues, and risks are solved quickly. And we also work with our partners, so customers and other vendors and other, you know, platform facilities to ensure that there are partnerships across security knowledge. Everybody has an interest in ensuring security across the facility. So. Last but not least, we jump into cloud. There's a ton of you know, options when a cl uh, cloud options exist. I want to touch a little bit on what does that mean for the topology that you pick? And the idea here is, is that regardless of the network topology that you pick for your local facility or remote site, all of these can also be linked up to cloud services and cloud devices. So that means that now you can share content, not only across WAN links from site to site, but you can also share as site content directly on cloud. So whether that's Amazon Web Services or specifically built media cloud. So lots of capabilities here, lots of things that we discussed. You know, the idea here is to give you kind of a foundational step of some of the different things that you need to look for when you're talking about moving things into this facility.